You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Great guest today. Yeah. I say that every time, but I, I really enjoy all the interviews. I'm very attentive. I listen. I like putting on these headphones and getting caught up in someone else's world mm -hmm. and also selfishly seeing if their their world, their ideas, ideologies, their uh, principles, their uh, the things they do to make themselves feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to steal from them. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. D Wallace, uh, you know her from uh many things. You've seen her in many things, the mom and ET and Cujo, and she's worked a ton. But boy, this could be one of the most emotional episodes, the most raw, real. Mm -hmm. Um, she breaks down talking about her ex-husband who passed away unexpectedly many years ago, and it's like it happened yesterday when she when she thinks about it. And uh, she helps people. You can talk to her for advice, for um, therapy. I guess you'll listen to the podcast and you'll 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 learn a lot, and you'll decide if you want to do that, which I would recommend because she's amazing. Uh, the handles to listen to the podcast, as you know, it really helps if you listen and you follow us and you write a review. All that stuff is monumental for the podcast, Ryan. Uh, at inside of you pod on Twitter, at inside of you podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, that is true. And uh, if you want to join Patreon to uh, help the podcast more, the folks over at Patreon are really helping. Patreon.com slash inside of you become a member. There's so many perks. You get shout outs at the end of every episode and tons of great stuff. And uh, I'm on the cameo. Uh, you know, what else? The band, Sunspin. You know, for all my information, go to the Michael Rosenbaum and go link tree. Mm. And you can just hit everything and just, you know, you go to the Inside You online store. Yeah. Incredible merch, small. I just got new tumblers. I might Ooh. have to give you a new tumbler. Oh. I got white tumblers, silver tumblers, more yellow tumblers. Crazy stuff, man. I got a lot of tumblers from you already. I'll tumble for you. <laughs> uh, what else? If you're in the giving mode, Mood. these uh, nonprofits are, are important to me. Uh, foodonfoot.org. Tell them I sent you for homeless echoes of hope for foster youth ronald mcdonald house um if you don't know ronald mcdonald house they um pay for families to stay with their children while they're going through treatments like leukemia and whatever and um it's a pretty fascinating um nonprofit. and they don't get a lot of money they need money from folks like us you know and uh the animal rescue mission my friend shira asked for shira i want to rescue an animal so many animals need rescuing and uh yeah we'll be july 15th we'll be in montreal the threesome smallville threesome doing a smallville nights get your tickets now and all that stuff uh that's pretty much it ryan is everything going well in your world yeah i was just remembering this episode actually uh it, it was uh i remember it being kind of therapeutic for both of us yeah yeah it was really fascinating yeah i i felt the same way I um I hope that people love it as much as I did. Some sometimes you see a name and you're like, oh, I might not know D. Wallace or Michael Rosenbaum, but you know, here's the deal. Listen, yeah. because you're gonna learn a lot and I think it will affect you. I think you'll be glad you listened. So this is one of my favorites. This is certainly one of my favorites. Let's get into the wonderful, beautiful D. Wallace. It's my point of view. You're listening to inside of you. Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Do you have things, weird things around your house? No. No not posters? Really. Well, sure. Memorabilia of what you've done? Well, sure. But I don't consider that weird. It's just <laughs> self indulged, maybe? No, it's just part of my history, you know? Yeah. Do you have a uh, an E.T. autograph poster from the cast on your wall somewhere? No. <laughs> See, I, I, how, how do you not have that? I you, don't know how I don't have you that. You never thought of that stuff when you were doing um, your movies. No, you know, back in the days, back in the olden days. Back, by the way, you look unbelievable i'm not just saying that i'm thank you and it's not like what were you you said to me when i it's all me too i haven't had any work done 
Are you serious? I I am serious. D. He's acting now, isn't no. he? No, I swear. To, <laughs> listen, I don't want to. I don't want to look. I someone I know that I'm very close with is in their in their late seventies, and you look like twenty years younger than them. Come home with me, little boy, will you? <laughs> I'm not that young. How old do you think I am? Oh, guess. No, I just don't. guess. I'm so Take a wild bad at that. I'm fifty. Well, I would have said 40s. You would have said 49. No, I would have said 40s. Okay, 40 ish is good. So whatever's good. Don't you think that I've said this before, but um when you're in your 40s, you're like, oh, I wish I was 30 again. When you're in 50s, you wish you were 40 again. And you know what? We were playing this game at dinner last night. You My are. daughter had this thing on her phone asking questions. Would you rather Stop time now and pause, go on pause, or rewind. And I said, I'd pause. I, I've i never been happier and more fulfilled than I am right now. <sighs> well, thanks for the interview. This has been <laughs> great. Uh, that's... A lot to say. No, it's 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 hard to understand. Hard to because I'm you know we're we're all trying to find that we're all trying to find that balance. We're all trying to find that that sort of that let go. This yeah. is who I am. This but is see, what I love. That's, I'm happy. I'm content. I'm whatever. That's the challenge. Is everybody's looking for it out there? Yeah. To find External. it, and it's here. It is. And you write about these. You, I, I, I had no idea. You have three self-help books. You've yeah. done a TED Talk. You do meditation. You do private healing sessions with D yeah. on your website. For w, 40 what is years. It? What is it, D? I am dwallace.com. How could you not want to hear this voice? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Ryan, don't you wish you could feel like that? And maybe that's our goal. We want to just keep working on ourselves. We go to therapy. <laughs> Well, you always work on yourself. Yeah. You know, I mean, somebody called into my talk show once and said, Dee, I just want to know when I'll be there. And my channel said, there's no there to get to. It's just a constant state of expansion and understanding of energy. Now, let's go back <clears throat> because... You grew up in Kansas City? Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah. Uh, and but it all started there because uh, did you have a good childhood? No, neither yes. did I. You yes. did. Yes, I I had <laughs> a dichotomy of a childhood. Uh -huh. um, very strong mother, very talented mother. She was an actress in local theater. She she worked as a secretary, but she was a beautiful, beautiful actress. Uh, directed all the. Uh, religious place at our church. I started out as baby Jesus and ended up as a Virgin Mary. And and then I went to Hollywood. <laughs> and then you became the devil. Yeah, and then I did all those horror films. Um, and my father was a, a damaged creative from the war. Um, he was such a creative, but PTSD. After the war, my mom said he was just a different person. Never the same. He worked in the Red Cross and picked up bodies on the field. And and uh, when he came back, he became a severe alcoholic and um, uh, ended up committing suicide. Really? And my little brother followed the same pattern three years ago. Oh, my Lord. So... There was so much love and so much, you're incredible, Deanna, and you can do anything. And then this dichotomy of, oh, am I okay? What's going to happen? I've, I've got to be vigilant, what, you know. Was he an angry alcoholic? Uh, at times, yeah. Yeah, at night. I never saw him hit my mother, but he verbally abused her and berated her and yelled at her 
every night of my life that I can remember. And she stayed with him. Yeah. Because do you think she just knew where it was coming from? Because and- I, she knew he was a good person. Deep down. It still affects yeah. you. I could see that. Yeah, it does. It does. It's unbelievable how our childhood, no matter what we do, how much we work on it, yeah. it it just, there's parts of it that you just, ha- you, you have. Let me tell you, your little kid is running the show. So the more oh. you can um, mine everything that you were taught or everything that was modeled to you in front of you, from zero to eight years old, you will see every wall that you're hitting as an adult. Man. Do you know the our brains, from the way we see ourselves, see ourselves in the world and how we see the world looking at us, totally in place by eight years old. This, and, this hits me home. You have no idea how much, Ryan, you know. I mean, it's. I well, always talk about the developmental stages from that that time period. Like, I, I would say, yeah. I would say, kind of like around six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. That, that time period. Because what happens is, true or false, based in reality or not, you create your belief systems. And then from those belief systems, because as you believe, it's delivered to you, from those belief systems, we create our life. And then we go, well, yeah, but that's the way life is. That's the reality of my life. And it's the reality of our lives because we believed those things that were instilled in us before we had reasoning to work through them. You're saying, in my interpretation, this is how my mind works. <clears throat> You're saying that as a child, when I I never felt I was loved ever. I just didn't. I didn't feel that from my parents. They never t- told me I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm you know all. I, I just never heard that. I never. Um, it was just I, I. I didn't. I never felt that. So I see in my life today. It's hard to allow people to love me because I no, think no, no, no. It's not that they don't love Hold me. Hold on. Okay. Well, you can't feel anybody's love if you don't love yourself there it is. first. I guess that's it. You and we're never taught to love ourselves. N- none of us are. We we're taught that it's braggadocious and. It's, you know, God's not going to love us if we're too full of ourselves. And people will judge us if we think we're awesome. And so wow. we're, we're taught to put ourselves down. And so our little child within us now is going, I'm going to keep you safe. Don't get too big. I'm go- That's my job. I'm going to keep you safe. And it's our job as... It's our job to be the parents of our little child now and retrain them into a, a greater truth of how awesome and loved and loving we are. Yes, but, but it's very difficult when the people who created you, you don't feel like you're worthy or you're you're good enough or yes but you it, can't, it, is, it is a hard thing and i've worked on that for up many to years them anymore that's true that's true and that's as long that's as you I, keep bringing them into the equation you will never move on yeah they look according to my channel we pick our parents mm, i've so, heard that before and we pick our parents to learn in most cases what we don't want and what we want to recreate in our lives. So they taught you, I don't feel loved. So that you could choose now in this moment, I choose to love myself. Mm-hmm. So you know how much you love that dog? Oh God! When I walked Nothing in, else, Blanche. Okay, so just feel that in your heart. Just feel how much you love little Blanche. 
it's funny because it makes me like, oh, like right when you said that it kind of brings up like emotions yeah yeah it's now like, oh my choose God, it's to give that to yourself see it really is easy but we keep making it very i think what happens is i think yeah i start you think to think too I'm, much. I'm not a good person like I, i'm not the person i want to be i sort of like envy certain people because i'm like gosh i wish i was that patient and that um under understanding or that but um well who you else know? is going to create that if you don't but you see you have to love yourself enough yeah, yeah. to choose to do that yeah. to be that this is already the most effective podcast. I have 230 <laughs> oh, guests. I'm already like, wow, you, you're oh, speaking to you. a lot of people. A lot of the folks are going to write in and be blown away and follow well, D. Wallace. <laughs> I've, I've lived this. I've I know. I want to get into that because I know you have. through my own trauma and my own heartache. And uh, I just realized every moment is a choice that's what happened then in this moment right now how do i want to create me did you was there a time in your life that you remember specifically or times where you didn't love yourself where you didn't feel complete you didn't understand the oh way yeah you were last week <laughs> last week <laughs> like i said it's an ongoing creation process this show is sponsored by better help sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear whether you're dealing with decisions around your career your relationships or anything else therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, so it's convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash inside today to get 10% off your first month. That's Better H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash inside. This message is sponsored by Discover. Did you know you could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails with online privacy protection? The latest innovation from Discover. Discover will help regularly remove your personal info, like your name and address, from 10 popular people search websites that could sell your data and they'll do it for free. Activate in the Discover app. See terms and learn more at discover.com slash online privacy protection. So something happened on a set uh, a week or two ago and I went into an old pattern of reaction and started taking everything personally. Uh, and let me give you one really simple statement. Whenever you're in reaction, you're out of creation because you're out of choice. So I, I took myself to my dressing room and I looked in the mirror. <laughs> when I do this, I always call myself Deanna Bowers. That's my given right, name, right, right. right? Deanna Bowers. You're totally in reaction now. You're in the toilet, and there's a lot of shit in that toilet. <laughs> and you're about ready to flush yourself down. So do you want to go down the toilet, or do you want to get out of the shit and choose what you want to create here? By that time, I'm laughing, which allows me to regroup I know, I and, and right discharge the the reactionary thing and so i got myself rebalanced and i went in and i handled it did and, someone yell at you was someone disrespectful rude well you see no and i perceived it that way uh sensitive something well i felt like they were not respecting 
my body of work and how much I knew as an actor. Do you think ego got in the way maybe? No, I, I, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it was ego. Um, it was, it's a pattern that has been repeated over and over and over in my life of, um, people using me and disrespecting me. And so subconsciously what happens then is you're always on the lookout like I was a l when I was a little girl. Is everything okay? Is daddy going to get too drunk? It's, you know, something going to uh. happen. So I'm programmed and conditioned to look out and see those things instead of look out and see and it's much more on the positive side now, you know. Yeah. But every once in a while, this happens to me again, and I get to go, oh, good, another opportunity to expand. You know, I saw something on Instagram because they always have mm -hmm. these quotes and quotes of the day and people saying, I can help you. And, oh, this shit. And it's like, oh, my God. And I, and I take screenshots and screenshots and I never look at them again because I'm thinking, yeah, I need to do that. But I don't do that. But there was something on there that said um if you have childhood trauma you probably do this and it said every situation you think of something bad that's going to happen in that situation and i go childhood yeah. trauma yeah i do i'm telling you the little kids are running the show so my channel suggests that everybody writes down Everything that you were verbally taught or modeled mm -hmm. in front of you around whatever wall or subject you're you're needing to break. But what through. if you believe by the way, where's your channel? Where can they find this? Dwallace.com. I am dwallace.com. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. I'm and, gonna start uh, there's listening all to this. news. Yeah, my pot my I call it it's not a podcast, it's a radio show. Right. And I've, I'm, call I'm <laughs> almost 700 episodes. Please call in. Holy him. shit, 700. And you can ask anything. You can ask about sex. You, you can. can ask about you know enough health. about sex? Look at me. What do you think? Have you had a lot of sex in your life? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good comeback, would it? I don't know. You don't look like some. I mean, you look like someone who's together. So I can't let maybe if I, but I don't, I don't look at you and go, God, she's had sex. A lot of it. Well, you're not looking very closely. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, but uh, we'll get into more of this. The sex back. stuff. We'll get, that didn't sound right, did it? We'll get into more of this. We'll, we'll be right back. No, um, you know it's it's hard. I'll just say this, and we'll maybe we'll talk about this more. But I want to get into some other stuff. But um, it is hard, and I'm working on it. What's hard is. Okay, stop right but, there. But, but, no, no, but believing. No, stop. But you don't know what I was going to say. Yeah, I, I, but I have to stop you there. Okay. Because, all right, I have to I have to explain this to everybody. Everything's energy. We learned that in fifth grade, right? Right. There is no positive or negative energy. Energy is neutral. Energy must have a direction in order to take manifestation. For example, if you want ice, you have the intention of making ice. So you go, you get the ice tray, you fill it up, you put it in the refrigerator, you have ice. Freezer. Freezer. <laughs> Excuse the shit out of me. Okay. Ah, yes, please. So you <laughs> gave it, you gave yourself a direction and the energy followed through. You just... You keep saying how hard everything is. And if you keep saying how hard everything is, that is a direct direction to your energy, energy. and your brain. See, my work is a, a combination of spirituality and brain science. So whatever you say, think, or feel, you're giving your picture, your brain pictures. So if you say what you don't want, which is what most people do. Like, I don't want to have to worry about money. What does your brain see? Worrying about money, which equals you don't have enough money. 
So I wow. had to stop you at heart. I hear you. You know? But what if you believe some of the things that were If you believe in- it, it's true. As you believe. Look, if if people can just get that, they can change their whole life around. Whatever you believe, you manifest into reality on this plane. We are the gods of us on this plane. Nobody can think a thought for us. Nobody can feel a feeling for us. Nobody can hold a belief for us that we don't accept. That makes us the God of us, right? So we have to be responsible for choosing the thoughts, the feelings, and the beliefs that match what we want to create. So now, Mm -hmm. what was hard, which is now easy? What were you going to say? Nothing. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like you're a really smart teacher that I like, but I don't want to... Oh, come on. No, Look I, at me. I'm such a nice broad. No, I like it. I I just want to kind of, you are a nice broad. <laughs> You've had a lot of sex, apparently. Um, look, God. Kansas City, what? Well, yeah, you you know. Just we'll get into I'm, sex. We can get into sex. I, you're, mid, you're an open book. From the Midwest? Me, guess where I'm from? Where? Indiana, Southern Indiana. Oh, see, I knew I liked you right away. Right. Evansville, you know, Newburgh, Indiana, Evansville, Indiana. Yeah, but I wouldn't move back there. That's funny you said that because I was thinking of moving back there. Uh, I couldn't move back to Kansas City, and I and I love Kansas, and I'm so proud of all the women who stood up in Kansas and got the abortion thing <clears throat> done there. But it that's the thinking is too limited for me now. The Midwest and the South is based in very strong religious roots and that's not where your head's at that's not well none of my work is against any religion right it's an expansion of the concept of what god is right so i don't use the word god much i use the word creative force right because people don't have any kind of negative hooks in the word creative force or energy. But you say God and a lot of people, a lot of children inside us have negative reactions to that word. All right. I got you. I I understand that. I do understand that. Religion teaches us to be small. It teaches us we don't have any power. It teaches us we have to go through other people to be connected to the creative force that creates everything. None of those things are true. I mean, the big man actually said, these miracles and more will you do also. Go do them. Mm. You know? And then the popes and the kings got together and said, well, how the hell are we going to have all the power if we let them know they have the creative power? You're saying sort of don't become a slave to this. You have, to, yes. you have to take over the power. You have to be. You have to. Right. We were given free will to create ourselves on this plane. Mm-hmm. I, I I like that. Okay, I'll shut up. I get up. My Baptist preacher comes out. No, I, I, I like it. It's very. <laughs> look. You, and I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you taught high school drama. I did. You, you have an education degree. I did. You never thought you were going to be an actor, did you? Always. You always did, but you went. Always. I, I've been acting since I was a little girl. Were you, uh, did you know you were good? Did your mom go, oh my God, you have it? Yes. Did everyone else say you have it? I don't remember. But you still wanted to get a degree. I got a, deg- a degree from my mom. What do you mean? My mother said, okay, Dee, Dee be an actress, but just have something to fall back on, please. Because she had had such a hard life. Right. And she wanted to know that I was safe in the world, Uh that I could. So I, it just meant so much to her. My older brother, uh, 
actually, my older brother went on and got a PhD. <laughs> my older brother worked his way through seminary shooting pictures for Playboy. That kind of sums up the dichotomy <laughs> of me and my family right That's there. That's genius. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um so you loved, but you taught, you taught in I school. I did. I taught How one old? year. How old were the students? Um, oh, ninth and 10th grade. And how did, what do you remember from that? Uh, a lot of challenge. I, look, back then I would have to show my credentials to get lunch because they thought I was one of the kids. Really? You know, I I just always looked re really young back then and but I I'm a natural born teacher. I love to teach. Obviously. You do. I have taught all my life. I've had my own acting studio uh, out here actually, one of the largest ones for 18 years. I had my own dance studio in Kansas. I taught high school. Um, and now I I teach life <laughs> yeah. and creation and manifestation. I, I just know how to communicate on a simple way that people can understand and relate to. Do you still love acting like you did? Or is it just sort of like... Um, Paycheck. It, 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 no, it depends on the on the project, project and the part. What, I have, yeah. I have a, a incredible thing coming out right now called Paul T. Goldman. It, it's the guy's name that it's about. Um, it's going to be out in January. It's a limited series. And I play the psychic in it, and they had no idea that I channeled when they hired me. Really? Yeah, it was it was real. So you really used it. You really did it. Well, I mean, I had a, a scripted, right. you know, version of exactly what the psychic told him, which. I'm telling you, you guys, if you watch this, you will sit there like I did and go, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is, did this really happen? I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond anything you can imagine, and it's real. <laughs> so that, Paul T. Goldman. Paul T. Goldman. On Netflix? Or um, uh, Peacock. Peacock. And then I am uh, recurring also on, um, yeah, what the, what's <laughs> of that show that I did? What is it? Um, oh, oh my God, I've I've done so much work in the last three months. Anyway, we'll come back. To you it. wow, you do you work a lot. I uh, this year, this year has been amazing, but then I have no beliefs. You see, about older women actors not being able to work. Well, let me I tell you. I don't have any of those But beliefs. you have, like, first of all, you're not old. But secondly, your mind is you're just sharp. I, you're sharper than my friends who are in their 40s. Oh, aren't you sweet? No, no, no. You're really, you're, she's not really sharp. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's like, you, you know, things like you, you go, one, you have this. Two, you have this. You start naming things. I'd be like, all right, five things. One, fuck, what was that? <laughs> what the fuck was that? You're like, you're just on point. Anyway, listen, I want to go back to the, when you first, you know, your first big thing when you got, because you were acting, you're taking class, you were going to, co you, you know, what's college. You went My to, first big you taught thing. taught for a year. Well, yes. I've got to tell you this story because it's so good. So we got... The new the New York Times uh, in the library mm -hmm. of the school, and I'm reading it because I know I'm kind of hankering to go. And there's this article that um, they're looking for an unknown to star in a little night music. What became a little night music? So I wrote this amazing letter and sent this cheesy picture I have to show you. I'm on my bed. No way. No shit. That's what <laughs> I, and back in Kansas, Ooh. I thought, you know. Provocative. <clears throat> you had to show them. 
Well, they called me and they said, Hal Prince was the producer. Mr. Prince has gotten your letter and your picture and he'd like to fly you to New York to audition for a little night music. Now, what? This, this is how naive I was back then because I'm from Kansas. So I said, oh, my gosh, that's that's wonderful. When does Mr. Prince need me? And they gave me the date. And I went, oh, my gosh, that's the day I arrive. I already have a ticket. I'm oh. already going. <laughs> what time does he need me? Five o'clock. Oh, I get in at two. That'll... You know, he would have flown me first class, put me up the whole thing. Who knew? I didn't, you know. And they were like, okay. So <laughs> the day I arrived in New York City, I took every belonging I had, took it to a taxi cab, said, hi, could you take all this stuff to this address, please? Because I'm going to go down to Rockefeller Center and audition for Hal Prince and everything made it to the address are you I, I, did you give a guy a tip well i didn't see him after he took it sure i tipped him i knew that much <laughs> that's the I'm, first thing i think of you tipped him right <laughs> I, oh my god i give money to everybody i mean i know everybody. i'm like that too i feel like everybody I and i see somebody you know people work hard well and people on the street the homeless people and People say to me, oh, my God, they probably have, you know, a three-bedroom house and they're standing out there. And But I always go back to Neil Donald Walsh's conversations with God. And there's this part in it where, and it made such an impact on me, where he says, you know, you're walking down the street and you see a homeless person and you go, I should give him something. And you reach in your pockets and you have a nickel and a $5 bill. And you go, God, a nickel, the nickel's not enough. And five's too five, much. Five, geez, I don't, you know, I'm probably going to need that. By that time, you've passed him. And it wasn't his moment. It was yours. It was your moment to go, yeah, I'm that abundant. And I'm telling you, I do that all the time. And it comes back to me 10 times I, over. Uh, 10 uh, times wholeheartedly. over. And you know, what I like about it, about giving, and it comes back to haunt me a lot of times because sometimes I give way too much and people take advantage that I just, we won't get into that. But I know that I like to give and I like to, I see someone, but it, it's not like, you know what? Uh, I, I, I'm doing a good thing and people oh, look no. at No, no, it's, it's unsolicited. Out of your heart. It's honestly, I feel it. I feel yeah. like I look at the person, I'm like, you know what? This guy's struggling. I could do something. And, and you, maybe I could get him a cup of coffee. I'd give him 20 bucks. I could say, hey, right. how's your day? Whatever it is. I, I I do that. I do that with people like the counter person at Burger King. Yeah. I'm like, hey, they're like, how's it going? And it's going. I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll start talking to him. I go, hey, you know, it's almost the weekend. And, you know, and I just try to be whatever and try to give him a little something, whatever. I, I just, it, and you I never like to do that. give at the expense of yourself. Right. I, I want people to hear that because a lot of us are brought up to think that we're better people if we give ourselves up for other people. But what happens then is you take the responsibility from that person of them creating themselves if you enable them too much. Right. So that actually disempowers oh, them what do you think of when she says that yes <laughs> this is the best podcast i think of my mother i think of like i enable her and i give and i give and she goes oh. every text is like oh how would you decide about that job what is you trying to get me in like oh but i miss you so much i gotta see you and blah 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 oh my god i can't afford this thing i don't know what i'm gonna do it's always manipulated. It's always yeah. That's it's always very passive aggressive. It's just it's been like that my whole life, especially since my well, parents got divorced. That has been like I, I feel like I, I say this with love. Who's allowing that? Me. I know. That's it. My my business manager well, says then it. Change it, Michael. Are you? I go. I'm not doing this anymore. It's like either do it or you don't. Oh, I like your business manager. Yeah, do it or you don't. I don't want to hear it. You know. 
Do it or you don't. Well, but he's right. He's he right. can't make that decision for you. Yeah. See, you have to know that you can love her and do love her without doing that. We're going to get into this. I'm okay. going to I am going to Get into it, baby. Well, I <laughs> I like I want to I want I want us to be friends. God's sakes. You're just like do you you should be a therapist. <laughs> well, she kind of is. You I kind, kind of, of are. Am. Yeah. <laughs> like I could buy a session from you for an hour. Well, I do half hour sessions. Believe me, that's all you need. And I Wait, so you'll talk to me for half an hour for a... Yeah. I'll I actually, mean, you're doing it for free. I'll actually for... give you a session. Really? I'll just gift you one. Because you know I'll be hooked. It all it all comes back to me. I just want you to be able to take this into your life and take it out into your to your listeners. Let, so yeah. everybody everybody wants to be free. Yes, and we're the only ones that can free ourselves. Let's go back to how that's Prince, the good news and the bad news. You give the taxi guy the okay, bags. Okay, okay. You're now at the place. So, uh, so I got down to the last five girls in the dancing and the acting, and they say, "All right, we, Mr. Prince, would like to hear you sing." And I went, "Oh, I didn't know he had to sing." And his secretary looks up at me and she says, "Well, dear, it is a musical." <laughs> He said, it's all right, sweetheart. Sing happy birthday. And the accompaniment says, what key? And I went, Any? somewhere in the middle. <laughs> That's what I would have said. That's what I would have said. So the first day, uh, I auditioned for Hal Prince and got down to the wire, didn't get it. But by the time I left, because there were so many great you know, performers there, I knew where to go to study, who to study singing with. You know, I got, you learned a lot. I got all that down, boy. You know, and I'm telling you, my naivete has just taken me through my career. I'm a huge believer in naivete. I, 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 wholeheartedly. Yeah. I think it's the reason, like, I, I became successful too because they were like, "Oh my God, you're gonna be, you know how the odds are of becoming an actor." I'm like, "Not for me. I'm I'm different. I, I'm a, I mean, I people wouldn't believe it. I remember this girl in college, uh, uh, Alexis Combs, loved her. She was awesome. We're sitting on the steps. It was right after I did this play. It's my senior year, and I go, Alexis, I don't want you to forget this moment. I'm not bullshitting you. I am going to New York, and I'm going to become famous." Remember this moment because I swear it's going to happen. It's there's no doubt in my mind it is going to happen. It was just like you said, an energy. It was like a naivete. It was all yeah. this shit. And I and I think a lot of that was sort of like, yeah, I'll go in for that tomorrow. Sure. Now I think yeah. overthink everything. Now I'm like, oh, I need four days to prepare for that. Okay, I don't know. I don't okay, know. but you so go back to the zero point of when you knew. I, I, I still know. It's just a Yeah, you, know, you do. You do still know. But you have to tell yourself you know. Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, otherwise you don't know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you talk about this ad nauseum, but if, if I don't bring it up, some of these oh, things, people will, well, people will just be like, well, first of all, we're getting the good things. When you got E.T., well, yeah. first you got the howling. Well, first I got a religious film. What was that? Uh, all the King's Horses that I did with Grant Goodeve. And then I went right into The Hills Have Eyes. Again, the dichotomy of me. So dark, The Hills Have Eyes. That was oh. probably like, were you, was that the, like at that point, like the hardest thing you've ever done? It's the only thing I'd ever done. Really? Come on. It was my first gig. Were you nervous? I, somebody asked me, he said, were you worried about how dark it was? Were you worried about what it would do to your career? I went, dude. <laughs> it was my first like leading role. I'm going, shit, I got a part. <laughs> you know, let's go. Yeah. I and can't I guess, swear on here, can I? Yeah. Oh, okay. I obviously Spielberg saw that and was well, like Well, and then um um I did the howling and ten with Blake Edwards was well, in Dudley there. Dudley Moore. Yeah. So, by the way, Dudley Moore is one of my favorite actors of all oh time. Oh my comedians. God, one of my favorite tell people. Tell me, just tell me a story you haven't told that you remember of Dudley's, anything, small, big, whatever. It, Dudley and I 
danced on many tabletops in Mexico. He, oh, God, D. He, you're, you're fabulous. And I <laughs> would uh, go out with the crew and hang out with the crew. And he was just so giving as an actor and so lovely as a person. I just, I just loved him. And so there was a scene which you'll probably remember if you remember the movie 10. Bo Derek. And um, Dudley is playing the piano. Oh, yes. And uh, so we did the scene, and Blake, everybody's breaking down. We're moving on to the next thing. And Dudley starts to play, and D is sitting there so moved by his playing that tears came to my eyes. And Blake stopped and he said everybody come back bring everything back we're going to get a close up of d listening to dudley play and it's this huge and you know that happens to me on every set with great directors they see something happening every, or brewing on et in the dinner table scene um is that the yelling thing we snapped or no that was the laughing thing he, he, well, it's when he said uh, the big di dinner table scene where um, we are talking about maybe he just imagined it, right? And then it gets into, well, why don't you call your father? I can't. He's in Mexico with Sally, right? When he said that as Mary, I took such a hit and the tears... I could feel the tears coming up, and I literally had the thought as Mary, I can't let the kids see me cry. So I got up from the table and left, which was not in the script. And Stephen yells cut, and he comes over and he goes, D, why did you get up and leave? That's, that's not in the script. And I explained to him what happened, and he looked at me. He said, everybody come in. You got a half an hour. I need you to build me a wall with a running kitchen sink right there so he could take me over to the sink and then bring me back into that big close-up where I says that. he hates Mexico. And it all just... But that's a good director. They see... <sighs> wow. They see the Rock moments... Ryan, you have to... You remember that? You don't, if you don't, you have to watch it. I... I haven't seen the movie in many years, and I immediately remember that moment. It almost makes me emotional because I remember that moment. I remember, you're like, he, like you're like he hates that, like trying. Yeah. To, oh my gosh. Yeah, and every 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 major. I mean, it happened with Peter Jackson all the Brighters? time. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, I love that movie. what a. What a lovely man Peter Jackson is. Man. And so talented. <clears throat> yes. Um, Michael J. Fox. I mean, it would happen with Joe Dante and Louis Tigg all the time. I remember in Cujo, do you remember that I scene? I just saw it, and I didn't know I was... Yes, He it. starts saying, I want my daddy, I want... And I said, all right, I'll get you your father, right? And then you start crying. You kind of go, I'll get you your father. Like, you were almost you were emotional, like... But you couldn't so take it anymore. It was awesome. came to me the next day and said, D, we need you to look at the dailies from yesterday. It's such a powerful scene, but we think we might cut it because we're afraid people won't like you. Fuck. They didn't. <laughs> so I never watched dailies, but I said, okay. And I went to Dan Blatt, our beloved producer, and I said, Dan... If you cut that scene, you're crazy. There's not a parent in the world that hasn't felt that moment. And they kept it in, and it was the most well-reviewed scene in the movie. <laughs> that movie, I you know, you know what's funny? But, I swear to God, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring it up if I didn't, if I didn't mean it. Um, I have horror movie nights every Tuesday night with my friends. It's the guys' oh, horror movie nights, and nice. we watch horror movies. And I go, "Oh, well, you've seen you a lot of me." <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I go, "Have you guys ever seen Cujo?" And they're like, "No." I'm like, "Are, are you fucking?" What? I go, "You're fucking kidding me? You never seen Cujo?" And they go, "Yeah, right, let's watch." I go, "All right, cool. Look, I remember this movie being intense, and I loved it. It may not hold up. I don't know, but let's watch it." 
and everybody unanimous. It was, boy, did it hold up. Yeah, it does. And it was, you know why? It was really because does. of the acting. You, that little Danny boy, Pintaro. Danny Pintaro. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Thank God I got that kid for that role because it was just him and me and him and me. And I couldn't believe he was, the things that he was doing, like almost dead. Well, and what was funny was because I'm, you know, that's why I play mothers. I get very <laughs> motherly with all these kids. And I said, okay, Danny, now tomorrow we're going to do the scene where you have to do the seizure so do you want to rehearse it? Are you afraid of any? He says, oh, that happened to me when I was little. You want to see? <gasps> and he goes right into it. And I went, I so do not have to worry about this freaking kid at all. Really? Yeah, he he was just an old soul. How much did you hate being in that car? And I, if I never see another Pinto again in my life, it will be too soon. <laughs> how, how, how many days do you think you filmed in the Pinto? Oh, we, you, were, we were in the Pinto half of half half the, the shooting. Yeah. Once you hit the halfway point, the rest of it in the Pinto. Yeah. And a lot of people think, you know, we were dying of the heat. We were actually really, really cold because it was in Northern California in November and December. My God. So, and they used like how many... They used a mechanical dog. They used a bunch now, of different wait, dogs. Okay. I read stuff, but I don't know if it's true. Okay. Yeah. There were 13 dogs that played Cujo. All trained to go after toys. St. Bernard's. Because you, could, you can't overwork a dog. You can overwork an actor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then they treated me for exhaustion for three weeks after that film. But there were 13 dogs that played Cujo. Uh, Gary Morgan was our wonderful stuntman, and he didn't do that much in, in the movie. The real dogs did almost every shot. You know what's crazy about that movie? As much as you care for you guys, you really feel bad for the dog. Yeah. Like, that dog is a mess. All the shit that they put on it. And you just, like, are, oh my especially God. if you're a dog lover... You saw these, you're like, oh my God. Yeah. When Cujo dies, you're like, it wasn't Cujo's fault. He had he had, he had rabies and it was like, yeah, his mind was gone. And that's why we had to, we had to really create so much terror and, and horrible things that Cujo had done in order to get to the, that last scene where he's coming through the door, through the broken yeah. glass, you know? <sighs> So the audience goes, yeah, shoot him because you Danny's to. gonna die. You have to do you it. Right. That's amazing. It's amazing how that moment you have to have that. You moment. know, in the book, Danny dies. Really? And Stephen King. Oh yeah, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Stephen King um, called Dan Blatt and said, "Thank God you didn't kill the kid at the end." You of couldn't the, do that. He never got more hate mail in his life than when he killed Danny at the end of Cujo. Really? That's. What he's that's what I was told. Did you like Stephen King? I did. I only met him one day. He he came down to the set at the beginning of shooting. Very how would I describe what I remember as Stephen King is Shy. a gentleman. A gentleman. A very yeah, soft spoken gentleman. Did he look like someone who look, you gotta have demons to write shit that he writes. No. You don't think so? No. I do. No, I think he's creative. But okay. why is it always so dark? There's something, don't you think there's something going on? If 95% of what you write is really, really dark shit. What's, 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 what's I what? don't, I, I have mixed, I have, I have mixed emotions about that. Mixed thinking about that. Right. Uh, one of my clients called and said, D, I'm taking this other class. And the teacher said that anybody that is involved in horror films in in any way is damaging their energy and and uh -huh. their psychic i said well i'm telling you that's bullshit because would you tell a little five-year-old girl who's playing a witch in a play oh she's gonna damage her psyche or 
or the kid that says, I'm going to be the alligator and Peter Pan and come get everybody that he's, it's just bullshit. We're doing what we love. It's fantasy. We are doing what we love that makes us happy. I'm glad you said that because you know? I, look at look at the movies around you. Evil Dead, Lost Boys, Jaws, <laughs> uh, you know, The Thing, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, Dracula, Return of the Living Dead, Friday the 13th. I love horror movies. And I start to think, is there something wrong with me? I don't think. You should Google. I want everybody. My mom wa- made me watch horror movies with her from the time I was eight. Just oh. so you know. But go ahead. Oh. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Bad we, we'll, yeah. It's, um, let's Google. Un- Google. No, let's unpack that. Let's- that's what? No, let's unpack that. So like you're gonna, <laughs> let's get you're into that. Money. We're going to get into that in my <laughs> therapy session. But go ahead. Google positive effects of horror films. You will be stunned. Write that down so I remember it. It it does positive things for your brain, for your nervous system. It helps you uh, learn how to deal with trauma. So that's why every Disney film has a really scary character in it. You know, when we would watch um, The Little Mermaid, my daughter would go, Mommy, lady, get big part. Lady, get big part where Ursula gets big. And, you know, she wanted to see that over and over again. So she could sit there in a, in a safe place like we do when we go to a theater and learn how to handle her fears. I mean... Seriously, is there anything that you've seen in the theater that's worse than what's going on in our world? No. Yeah. Not I rest close. my case. Uh, tell me about, I know it's probably not easy because I know you're an emotional person like I am. Oh, dear. But just like, I know you met your your husband, Christopher, Pastor Christopher Stone. Yeah. Who, on chips. You met him on chips. I met him on chips. We had both worked for the direct this director, and he called us and said, "Oh my God, you guys! I have this. uh, Will you please come in and help me?" So we both did. And Christopher was very established. Was he charming? No. (laughs) Okay. He was gorgeous. Yeah. But he he spent the whole week trying to direct me. Oh, you didn't yeah. like that. And so the last day we had to ride back together in the same car. And he said, so, you know, what's some of your latest uh, stuff? And I said, well, I just had this amazing episode on Lou Grant. And he went, oh, my God, that's you. You played the hooker. And I said, yeah. Did you see it? He said, not only did I see it, I ran into my wife at the time. He was getting divorced. And, and I said, you've got to come look. This, this girl's going to be a big star. He said, oh, my God, that's you. I literally changed before his very eyes. I'm not kidding. From this girl who I better give her some direction to Holy shit, I'm working with that guy, that girl from the Hooker episode of Blue Grant. So that was back in the days when we all had, what did we call them? The pagers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? And you went through answering services, mm-hmm. which, who was, they were never supposed to give out your personal information, remember? Right. right. <laughs> well, Christopher could get gold out of a monkey's butt. And so by the time I got home, there were two dozen roses sitting at my front door. He had not only gotten my address from them, he had gotten my phone number. And so about a half hour I got home, he called me and he said, did you get the flowers? I said, yes, that was very sweet of you. Thank you. And he said, well, I'd like to take you to dinner. Can, can you go to dinner Friday night? And I said, I'm sorry, I already have plans. I said, but I could go Saturday night. And he said, oh, well, Saturday night's my standing thing with uh, with all my guys. I play poker. And I went, he said, what about Sunday? And I said, I'm sorry I had plans on Sunday, but you know, 
call me in a couple of weeks. He said, no, Saturday night, I'll pick you up at seven. And he did not let me out of his sight or his life after that. You fell deep in the love. Oh my God, like like that. And it just, it never, did you have any rough times? I'm sure. Of course, everybody has rough times. But you guys were in love until the end, right? Until the end, yeah. And that probably hit you like a fucking brick. Yeah, I mean, I was- suddenly when he had a heart attack. I was attack. doing the Frighteners when he had the heart attack. And so I flew back. They did his angioplasty. He came through it. He was going home the next day. He said, honey, you've got to fly back. They're holding filming for you. I'm fine. So I did. Four days later, he got up, a blood clot hit his heart, and, and he died, and my little girl found him. Gabrielle found him. So I flew back to do his service, and then I picked up my kid and my nanny and flew. I was back, you know, it's halfway across the world, Australia or New Zealand. Oh, yeah. And... I was back and forth four times in two and a half weeks. How? How? Did, I didn't how, know whether I was coming or going. How did? You, how did you even? T- I don't I, know. I, I would have probably. I mean, you. Th- I, I don't know what I would have done. You don't know until you're in that situation. Peter said, "D, we never expected you." They had figured out how to shoot around me and shoot from my back. And would you break down out of the blue? Constantly was it constant? Like you couldn't handle your emotions. You know. Yeah, I I know. No, I I was taught by my mother watching how she handled all the stuff with my father. You know, I mean, he he tried to commit himself twice, tried to kill himself twice, and finally succeeded behind a bar when I was a senior in high school, and. She was so strong, and she just taught me, you handle it. You handle what you handle, and you get through what you have to get through. So I got back there, and I I went to the set. I had to shoot the scene where uh, Michael J. Fox or I drop dead and we go through the wormhole. Yep. And I watched Michael, I watched Michael and before he hit the floor, he be, he turned into Chris. Wow. And afterwards, the producer came to me and she said, Dee, I want you to go see uh, my doctor so that she can make sure, you know, that you're emotionally okay. And I walked in and this lady looked at me and she said, oh my God. You know, they're very into alternative medicine. and She said, you have no life force at all. I can't even work on you until I work on your life force. And this is, I had already been kind of veering into the healing arts, but this, she laid me down on a table and she put gemstones on all my chakras. And I thought, well, this is pretty weird. I (laughs) know. Yeah. I'm telling you, in a half an hour, I felt like I was reborn. And then she gave me some homeopathic medicine, and she there was somebody on the set that was supposed to give me three every three hours or whatever it was. And everybody, you know, just rallied around me and got me through that, took care of my daughter. She was only seven years old. And I remember um, she was there when I was practicing flying in the, you know, in the harness. 
And she said, oh, mommy, I want to fly like Peter Pan. And they made her oh. a little harness so she could go Are up in it. Michael would play Foursquare with her. Oh, my and, gosh. And so at the end of the Frighteners, because they just, you know, this was four business class flights back and forth in two and a half weeks. And they said, don't worry, Dee, we'll take care of it. You can settle up at the end of the movie. Well, it would have been more, I think, than my whole salary. <laughs> and I went in to pay it off. And oh, sorry, no. the bookkeeper looked at me and she said, this is Peter's gift to you. He's just going to absorb all of this. And that's the kind of guy Peter Jackson Are you is. kidding me? Yeah. Holy crap. That's beautiful. Yeah. It really is beautiful. Sorry. I'm no. I'm all flumped now. No, I, lo I love your emotion. I love your vulnerability. It just tells me everything about you. You know, that you're just you're human. You really show your emotions and you... You've lived your life. You've lived. You've gone through the lowest of lows. Yep. And look at you. And this is what... Well, again, those were those moments. What am I going to do with those moments? I can stay a victim or I can be victorious over my own life. I choose B. I mean, Wow. You're getting a big hug from me after this. I hope so. I mean, it's going to be good. Because I'm coming on for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Holy crap. Let's get into sex before you leave. <laughs> uh, we're almost done. I mean, we're almost done. I mean, I, this is. Segway. Uh, I mean, I, I could talk. Honestly, to God, I, I I could talk to you. I feel like I could talk to you forever. Like, this is, it's weird because I'm like. Oh, well, well I've no, written it all down yeah, in the in my born. New, born giving birth to a new you. It's literally the formula for manifesting everything in your life. I so love this. It says, can, and I yeah. brought you one. You did? Yeah, it's in my purse. It is the book is called Born. It is a book about directing energy, knowing neutrality, self-actualization, knowing you are the power, claiming your desires, and easy creation. Yeah. Look, God created the world in seven days. How hard could it be, guys? <laughs> Seriously. You know, this is what I want. I know I create it. I match it with love. I ask the universe to partner with me. It's really pretty simple. You know, it's funny what I just thought of. What? I have your assistant's email, and I'm like, I want to have her email. I want to have Dee's email. Her real email. You can email. have it. I won't D you. at imdwallace.com. Everybody well, well, can have it. Really? So anybody can email you? Yeah. So you go through thousands of emails? Yeah. She's D. I told you this story before we began I'm filming. I'm a busy girl. <laughs> I, I, well, healing, acting, healing, acting, acting, healing, acting. Well, let's know? get real funny. Uh, sex. I, 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 well, sex. <laughs> Who's the most famous person you had sex with? Did you have sex with Dudley Moore? He's, he's passed. Oh, God, no. Okay. No, have, no. Okay. All right. Uh, I, probably Christopher. Really? I'm trying to... Oh. I just thought of somebody. I don't want to say. Um, it was when I first got to Is New this York. person alive? Uh, I, no, I don't think so. Okay, well, who cares? No, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Is it a big star? He is a pretty big star, yeah. But Christopher Reed Was it is, from one of the movies you worked on? No. Damn it. Now I no. can't kind of eliminate certain people. No. No. You would never guess in a million years. All right. Uh, will you tell me after? I won't ever mention it. I won't. It's not, not on here. I, I, I'm not, never mind. Uh, this is called Shit Talking with D. Wallace. It's rapid fire. You answer fast. Oh, I hate this You're going to have to do it. These are my top tier patrons. Go to patreon.com slash inside of you. Oh. They give to the podcast. They keep it going. Dana asks, with being an OG on the horror scene, do you get creeped out over anything besides my sp fake spider in the you know, <laughs> spider in the bathroom? Oh, and spiders and snakes and guns. I hate guns and I have to fucking use one in every movie i do i hate guns <laughs> yeah. my dad killed himself with a gun my brother killed himself with a gun i don't see any use for guns in this world 
Amen. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, by the way, the spider, quickly. You worked with the spiders on what? The hills have eyes, the hills have that eyes. big freaking tarantula. And they said they they don't they don't buy the they Oh yeah, there's no they're not dangerous. They can't hurt you. And then afterwards they said, Well, actually they can de but we milked it first. They milk the spider. Yeah. They de they, poisonize yeah. it. Yeah. Great, huh? Great, thanks. Sophie yeah. M, what was the casting process for E. T. like? Actually, they just offered me E. T. I had auditioned for Steven for used cars. Oh, I love used cars. And I didn't fortunately I get know, it. I know, but I loved it. You see this car right here? The price is 2400 Too fucking high. <laughs> <laughs> Slams it with a with a sledgehammer. And the, dude, it was uh what's his name? Uh right there. Kurt Russell. Yeah. Oh god, that movie's hilarious. I'm but I'm, I was destined to do ET. Did they pay you well in ET? Yes. Because I held out really long time. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Well, it's negotiations. Yeah. You know, that's the way it goes. How much money do you think you've made in residuals on ET from 1982 not, to now? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> but do you still get them? You still yes. get them? Yes. Yes. And I feel blessed every single time a check comes in. Do you still talk to any of the cast members? Oh, gosh. The boys and I are on tour all the time. Are you serious? We go to the cons all the time. Do you think Henry would do this? I'm friends with Mike Flanagan, who's friends with him. Who's He's been in a lot of his projects. I should talk to Mike. Or you. Yeah. Is he I a good guy? Talk to Mike. Oh, Henry? Henry's fabulous. He's wonderful. So is Robert. Ugh, and love. so, you know, we did Drew, an hour show with Drew this year. Yeah, I saw that. Yet. That was amazing. Yeah, it was great. They, she, she did a really wonderful job with that show, I thought. By the way, who's made you laugh? Who was the funniest person you ever worked with that you you always were like about to laugh? Dom DeLuise. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And it was, I had all these serious scenes. What movie? Oh, it was a movie of the week okay. called Happy. <laughs> and and so I would get ready to do all these serious things and and he'd look at me and go, <laughs> Your mother's ass! Oh, your mother's ass! <laughs> and he would just go off hysterically. Uh, I mean, Dudley was pretty funny too, but Dom this is the whole time Dudley Moore though to oh. me you know that movie Arthur have you ever seen it Ryan please watch it oh my there's god a you scene, haven't seen there's a scene when he brings Ryan. A, he brings a prostitute to this fancy restaurant and he sees his aunt and his uncle and he goes oh Uncle Harry Aunt Rue whatever <laughs> that's uh, pretty good this is um Princess Gloria <laughs> and she's a and he goes she goes princess yes she comes from a very small country in the West Indies. <laughs> it's so small they recently had the whole country carpeted. <laughs> I'm talking small. And it's like, it goes on. It goes, it's so small. A taxi cab around it is just five minutes long across the country. <laughs> it's so small. And he goes, Arthur, we realize it's small. <laughs> <laughs> he was... Oh. I just spent the whole time trying to keep up with Dudley. Oh, you're a prostitute? You I know. I was doing so good with you. I love that. I love that fucker. Okay. Um, <laughs> Kelly asks, any funny stories about working with Spielberg you can share with us? Funny stories. Was he a serious guy? Did he laugh a lot? Oh, no. He's like very childlike on the set, especially with the kids. I mean, he... He just loves what he does, you know? He would shoot pinball with the kids and and all that stuff. But I I wouldn't describe Stephen as funny. I would describe him as childlike genius wonder. Did he come up with stuff on sets or like little things that you go, holy shit, this guy's freaking unreal like he'll just say you know try doing this way and he literally gave me about three directions the that's whole it. film he, you went on your own those laughs with you when you start laughing <laughs> and you're like that 
it's that's unbel- all that was all that penis breath that was all just what happened to you me in when that I, moment. I, I'm, I'm not kidding around i was in love with you when i was young <laughs> like i was in I love with you that a lot i'm not well no they're not lying <laughs> You got to go back and watch. It you was, are so charming and cute. It was the Halloween dress. You're the mom everybody wanted. <laughs> yeah, I was a milf. Oh my yeah. god, you're a milf. I was. Now you're a gilf. <laughs> Raj, is there? <laughs> and I unfortunately know what that means. Do you do? Yes. Uh, Raj, is there a moment that stands out where you felt you had made it as an actor? Yes, and you know you're going to be surprised, but I. I believe it was after I saw the screening of The Hooker in Lou Grant. And I looked at at that and I went, yeah, I've got it. You knew. Yeah, I, I knew. As far as making it, as far as people knowing my name, probably 10. Unbelievable. Do you like watching yourself? Um, I don't not like watching myself. I don't watch myself a lot. Yeah. Um, I like watching myself with with my kid, yeah. you know, and letting her see some of the and now uh, my my granddaughter um, showing her, you know, some of the old older things that I did and some of my series stuff my my daughter really never saw so I really wow. enjoy that but I I have to tell you you know Christopher would look at stuff he did and go okay I won't do that again yeah that was pretty good I I can't do that I I just watch and I I am proud to say that when I watch me, I always think I'm very truthful. And that's the end all and be all for me. <sighs> this has been an absolute joy. An absolute, like, un... It has. Oh, my God. Did you really like this? Going. I've had so much fun. I, you know what? I'm not kidding. I, <clears throat> like, I doubt I want you back. We never got to sex, though. So. <laughs> Are you are you a very sexual person? Very. Very. Like you love having sex. I love having sex. Even like I'm not saying you're old, but even at 73 years old, you st- when people think, "Oh, they stop when they're 70s, they or 80, they stop having sex. People don't have sex. They just live together." So that's bullshit, right? In my house it is. <laughs> really? Hey, you create it the way you want it, dude. Do you have to have sex every week? No. Every couple weeks? That's nice. Yeah. Do you always are you someone who initiates? Sometimes. Sure. Doesn't it turn you on when your partner initiates? I would say that's true. Hey, if I want to create something, I create it. <laughs> I don't wait for somebody else to create it. <laughs> I love that. When you when after Christopher passed, how long did it take before you started dating again? A long time. A long time. Yeah. Like you just couldn't do it. I didn't want to do it. You know, yeah. I wanted to be with my little girl and help her get through that. And then one day she looked at me and she said, Mommy, I need a daddy. Oh, my gosh. She just said that? Yeah. And I said, okay, I'll get on that. How old was she? She was probably nine. And you started dating immediately? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. And I married a wonderful, wonderful man, Skip Ballier, who uh, we were married for 13 years. And he was an amazing stepfather for her. And he passed? No, he's not passed. He's not. You just we did. just went our separate ways. but we're, Still talk? We're very good friends. That's yeah. beautiful. And he was a beautiful stepfather. And Gabby, you know how she handled it? She would say, she would never say daddy. She would say daddy Chris or daddy Skip. Say, remember when daddy Chris would blah, blah, blah. 
And I talked to Daddy Skip today. And- <laughs> I, you know, uh, well, you know, it, it's obvious that Chris was your true love in your life. That's, I, I just, uh, it's apparent. Chris was my soulmate. He was your soulmate. Yeah. And you were married for 20 years? 18 years. 18 years. Before he passed. Yeah. yeah. Well. But he's with me. He's, yeah. He's probably laughing over there in the corner now. He had such a... <laughs> I could Sick tell. sense of humor. Even in Kuja, you could tell what a character he was. He could be intense. He could be this. He could be that. Oh, yeah. It's so funny because he always played the bad guys. And he wasn't and like that. And he was that. the softest teddy bear you could ever meet. This big burly marine, yeah. you know. <laughs> I love it. Teddy bear. The book is born. Uh, you have to get her book on on uh, directing energy and so many other things. You can go to uh, dwallace.com. Or Amazon. Or Amazon. Uh, you could hear meditations. You could book her for half an hour. I am doing it. Uh, I am blown away by this interview. I hope you are. Uh, let me know what you think. Let her know what you think. What's your Instagram? Uh, okay. D look, look up D underscore Wallace. It's not D's nuts. <laughs> God. You had to end with that. You guys don't know we opened with that too. Before yeah, we were we joking were- around. Oh my god. I love you. I love you. I mean we have some I mean oh god, you're just a you're just a treat. All right, we'll close it on that. Thank you. This is probably the longest podcast I've done. Love yourself, guys. That's my la- my final words. What do I say? Love final- yourself, love yourself and love yourself more. You know what's funny? That's what I say at the ev- my last words on really? every podcast. I say love yourself. Oh wait, do I do that or be good to yourself? Be good to yourself. Be good to yourself. Well, I'll add you love can't yourself. be good to yourself if you no, don't love, love yourself. yourself. That's right, baby. <laughs> what was that one thing? Everyone. All right, I love you. I love thanks, you too. Thanks for insi- uh, uh, allowing me to be inside of you today. You bet. Okay. Awesome. You know, it's funny as I love that I said, D's nuts. <laughs> I go, does anybody ever say that to you? And she went with it. She went with it. She's she, game. She's game, man. What a joy she is. She's just so much fun. I want to hang out with her. Yeah. I text her. I said we should get lunch. She didn't respond. Oh, well, but she doesn't want to hang out with you then. Maybe not. People say they want to hang out with me on the podcast. They have so much fun and they leave and they just forget me. This older woman does not want to hang out with you. What a bummer. Now she's going to call. <laughs> Michael, that's not true. <laughs> it's true, T. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, if you didn't listen to all the stuff in the beginning, you might want to rewind and listen to the intro. There's a lot of great information there on the podcast and the band and all that stuff. If you want to zoom me, zoom me and welling patreon.com slash inside of you to become a patron. Uh, we need you. We love you. And here are the top tier patrons, Nancy D Leah K it's Leah S. I don't mm-hmm. know why he puts Leah K little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Raj C, Joshua D. What accent is that? I don't know. Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B. Now I'm jumping into Dave, Dave Hall, <laughs> Mike E, L Don Supremo, 99 more, Santiago M, Chad W, Lee M, P, my, uh, P, 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 P. Maddie S, th- Maya P, thanks for the Red Bulls in, I believe, Toronto. You saved me. I was I was tired. Matty S, Belinda N, Dave H, Sheila G, Brad D, Ray H, Tab of the T, Tom N, Talia M, Betsy D, Angel M, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Brandy D, Yavor, Joey M, Eugene and Leah, Corey, Heather L, Jake B, Angela F, Mel S, Caroline R, Christine S, Eric H, Shane R, Andrew M. What happened to Zotoichi? Remember Zotoichi? Maybe, he, maybe they're just in Smallville now. Maybe. I don't they know. Le- they left me. I don't know. I don't know. Tim L, Oracle, Amanda R, Jen B, Kevin E, Stephanie K, Jorel, Jam and J, Leanne J, Luna R, Mike F, Stone H, Brian L, Aaron R, Kendall L, Meredith I, Kara C, Jessica B, Kyle F, Marisol. Hi, Marisol P, and Andrew M, and Estevan G, and Kaylee J, Brian A, Ashley F, Mary and Louise L, Romeo the Band, Veronica Q, Frank B, Jen T, Nikki L. Couldn't do it without you. 
Thanks for being a patron. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. And by the way, the patron thing is is really cool because not only do you get shout outs and boxes and little notes sent from me, we do YouTube lives just for the patrons. We do, I do bonus episodes. Sometimes I'll do a Zoom with the top tiers. Um, sometimes we meet up uh, in cities at different cons, which I'm trying to work out now. Uh, it's, it's, it's cool. I, I hope you join and help the podcast. And uh, thank you for listening. From Michael Rosenbaum here in the Hollywood Hills of California. <laughs> I'm Ryan Taylor's in Hollywood here as well. Yes, he is. Let's ride <laughs> Taylor's, everybody. And we wave to the camera. Thanks, guys. Be good to yourself. And I'll, I'll see you next week.